Hello, this is Chris Billier from Worcester Polytechnic Institute, and I'm discussing and showing how to do a screw, screw pullout test using uh, our Intron 5544 device and Blue Hill 3 software. A screw pullout test is essentially just a uniaxial tensor test, but we have some custom grips we made. Here's a picture of a bone, or an actual bone model, which is just a dowel of wood, and I have a screw screwed into it. And I want to pull it out using our custom device, which involves a jig that will pull the screw out. Now, these have to be attached to the machine. We could just attach the bone, or whatever the model is, to the machine, attach the puller to the upper grip and pull it out. But we've developed a custom jig that we can put in our lower grip that will hold the bone without crushing it, in this case the dowel. We put that in the lower grip, center it best we can, put our in our upper grip, we put our pulling device. We've made this so it has a little bit of play and can be moved in out of the way to uh, hold on to the screw. Tighten that in. We can put our bone model here in the device. You can make other custom devices as well. Let's move the upper grip out of the way so they can secure the sample. Make sure it's centered with the screws on my bone weight jig. Tighten them up. In this case, I'm using a 3 16 inch Allen key for these screws. And this will hold our material in place. Of course, with a different shape or size material, you may need a different hole. In my holding device, in, I have to make sure it does not hit. The screw. I have to make sure my my safety stop is in the correct place. This is a little bit tricky. I want to keep my hands out of the device. And there I have the screw. Now I'll set my safety stop so I can't go down any further. I'm not attached to anything. I'm not pulling on the screw, so I can now calibrate my transducer in. Zero it and balance my load. I've already calibrated the transducer. And now I go to the programming step, which is I have to select a method. Here I will browse for a uniaxial tensile method. Tension example. I can use my units. Here are the, the common controls that we can do. The most important thing is I don't care about stress and strain here. I only want force. Doesn't matter what size the sample is and such. I do need to measure time, load, and extension. Mostly load is the important control here. The only calculation I want is maximum load and at break, what is the, the force? I can control this just by extension, 
And based on ASTM standards, we can select whatever mode we like, however fast we'd like it to go. I'll use 25, but it depends on the ASTM standard. The end of test will be when it breaks and pulls out. I could use just a manual end of test. I want to take data pretty fast because I want to catch where it breaks. And here, pre-test, I could have it put a preload on for me. I'll do a slow extension to a small load. And at that point, zero my displacement or my tensile strain. Test will be at 25 again. It'll stop when it breaks, and I'll take my data. <clears throat> my console, I don't need to do any more zeroing, so I won't worry about what's in the console area. My workspace, I only need a layout of one graph. And in that graph, I would like my load versus extension, which is already set up. In my results, I would like at my maximum load is the most important. I don't need anything about stress or strain. Load and break and displacement and break would be nice to have. And I want to export my data. whatever place I want to find it. Here I can choose public and put in this happens to be for a class. And then I can I don't want my reports. I do want the results and the raw data exported for post processing that's needed. And before I start I'd like it to prompt me just for some general information. There's no sense having geometry thickness, but I could put, I could type in a sample description and the length could have something to do with the amount, number of threads or the length of the screw that is in the material. It's up to you how you define those. You can also use them as sample notes and specimen notes. You could have what the testing is up there. And you could have a sample description here. And then before the actual test, I could change the rate. I don't need to change the width or thickness. Again, I could have the length here. I don't need it in both places. And then I'm ready to save that. So to remind you, my test control will be the start of test, will be by the start button, Strain is by extension. The pre-test is go at 10 millimeters per minute up till a load of two newtons, then auto balance, and then pull it to failure. And I can now go back and select a test. Be 25 millimeters per minute. This is specimen one. My length is how far into my sample that I have screwed it. 
and that is for millimeters in this case. That won't be used for any calculations in the actual software. And I have to put my safety shield in place. I make sure here that I have this holding onto the screw. I have everything in place. I have my safety stop in place. And now uh, I could preload it if I would like to two newtons, but I'll let the computer do that. Generally, I put a safety stop in place, safety shield in place, but I don't want to obstruct the camera, so I'll leave that off and put my safety glasses on. Now it is being pulled up at 10 millimeters to a 2 newton load. Here, the screw is pulling out of the dowel. Since there's not a dramatic brake event, it will not stop. I didn't give it anything else but the 40% rate change in load, so I'll manually stop it. And now I don't want to return it yet until I removed the grip because it may come down here and it may come down and hit this piece onto my screw. So I'd like to remove this grip first, take it out of the way. And now when I hit return, I do not stop it. I've hit my safety stop because for some reason the extension was not zeroed by the computer when I went to the two newtons in the beginning. I guess I would say for that, it's always good to zero your extension manually before the test, uh, not rely on the test to do it for you, which I usually do. Here I was attempting to use that two newton preload and then it would automatically zero the strain. In fact, maybe it zeroed the strain, but it didn't zero the extension. And that, the maximum load here is listed at 925, the load and break 3.5, which that doesn't make any sense. That's down here. And extension and break is 148. So that's down here. Um, that just happens to be the longest point. But this is the place where it really pulled out at 925 newtons. And that's the number we're going to report for screw pullouts.